Hello. Today I'd like to talk about freedom of religion and freedom of speech. How can I put it? What is freedom of religion, for example? Uh, we hear of Christians, as well as others, demanding that the authorities make laws to give them freedom of speech, to preserve freedom of speech and religion. There's only one way that we can have freedom of religion. It's not a matter of external control. It's an internal matter. You can't legislate an internal condition of a person. You just can't do that. You can make all kinds of laws, systems, organizations, procedures, what have you, externally to control people, but you can't control the heart with legislation and laws. You can't do that. If you read in the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, people had freedom to speak because God gave it to them. It wasn't because the authorities gave it to them. In fact, in fact, the authorities were stifling freedom of speech and religion. What do you mean by freedom of religion? Right now we're seeing people saying, we need to have the freedom of worship to, 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 to uh, satisfy your religious beliefs, to um, freedom of religion for, for, for Christians, freedom of religion for Jews, for Sikhs, for Muslims, for Buddhists. We should all be free to worship God in the way that we choose to worship him. But what does the Bible say? The Lord said in the Old Testament to the Jews in Israel, you shall have no other gods but me. And this is that same God in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom, whom the Jews on the whole up to now have denied uh, they crucified him. They handed him over to the Romans, which was ordained of God, preordained. It was meant to be, it was prophesied by the Hebrew prophets that this would happen, that the Messiah would come, Isaiah 53, and he would be slain by the Jews. So the authorities are actually against freedom of religion in the sense that we think of it and define it today, where you can pretty much worship whatever you want. You can be a witch, you can be a Catholic, you can worship Mary, you can, you can worship Allah, you can worship Buddha, um, anything goes. And the summation of that, in the Old Testament, the book of Judges says that there was, there was lawlessness in the land. And it said that every man did that which was right in his own sight, in his own eyes. And that's what they are, are are promoting today freedom to do whatever is right in their own sight. In the Old Testament, they stoned, they were supposed, they were commanded to, to execute false prophets. If he was leading people away from the Yahweh, from the Lord God of Israel, they were supposed to take that person and have him executed. Capital punishment. And because, because they found Jesus guilty of blasphemy, which he wasn't guilty of blasphemy, because they found him guilty of breaking the Sabbath commandment, which he was not guilty of, uh, because he claimed to have a oneness with the Father in heaven, uh, blasphemy, uh, he did make that claim. They killed him for it, but he was one with the Father. And that's not something that they could understand. They couldn't accept it, wouldn't accept it. 
is prob probably more accurate. But in the Old Testament and the New Testament, in, in, the, in the Jewish law, the Mosaic law, and in the New Testament, there was no such thing as freedom of religion and freedom of speech. The Jews forbade Peter and John, for example, in the New Testament to preach in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They, for, they forbade them. And their answer to the Sanhedrin was, you, you decide for yourselves whether we should obey man or God, but as for us, we are going to preach the gospel. They said, we don't want you preaching in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John said, he's given us that command to do that. And you're going to have to decide what you want to do or what you'll permit or not permit. As for us, we will obey God and not man. So, so they took their freedom that God gave them and they spoke out. They preached Jesus Christ. They didn't demand freedom of speech. They didn't demand freedom of religion. You don't demand something like that. Peter and John were free. They were free. Yes, it would cost them their lives. But that's the true freedom. That true freedom is where, where, where you don't have to be concerned about what the world thinks about you. You don't have to be concerned about what men think of you, what other people, what other religions think of you. If you have that freedom of speech within, you'll speak. You'll be free to speak because you will, your spirit will be free to speak. Your heart will be free to speak. You will be free to speak. Why? Because God gives you that freedom by a new nature in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you won't have to use force. You don't use force. You don't need to use force. He'll give you to speak. And those who try to stop you, they use force. They use the force of the law. They use the force of uh, persecution. The Christians, in the early days of the church, they were persecuted. Jesus was persecuted. His disciples were persecuted. But they had freedom of religion, not from the world. Forget about receiving freedom of religion. If you do get freedom of religion, you're going to get the freedom of religion of the kind that says you can pretty much worship any way you please. Or you can worship according to the governmental uh, dictates or the, or the uh, dictates of the powers to be, or to be, the powers that, that, that existed, whether they're religious or secular. That freedom of religion isn't worth the hoot because now you've got idolatry in the land. God says, you shall worship no other God but me. No other God. It's an abomination. You're breaking that commandment. You're destroying yourself. Lawlessness is not freedom. Doing your own thing is not freedom. Not true freedom. Some people think they, can, they have the right to say what they want. Well, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking what I believe. I'm speaking uh, according to the freedom that everybody should have. Yes, I hate Jews. Yes, I hate niggers. Yes, I hate this and I hate that. And we're, 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 we're going to do according to what we believe we can and should do. And you don't have any right to stop us. That's freedom of speech. That's not the kind of freedom of speech, first of all, that God allowed or, was, or, or defined at all. And it's not the kind of uh, freedom that the original founders say of the U.S. Constitution, the, the framers of the Constitution. That's not the kind of freedom they were talking about either. Folks, where does this idea of freedom of religion, freedom of speech come from? Much prized privileges, principles, desires they are in this day and age. Let's take a look at the Bible. I find the Bible, without question, hands down, the most authoritative document in all of existence, in all of life, in terms of a written document, a wonderful source of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, how to live, wonderful principles. Where do we find anywhere in the scriptures 
where we are admonished or exhorted, encouraged, taught to have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Where? Can you show me any examples? There isn't one. Not in terms of how we define freedom of speech and religion today. Today it seems like when people talk about their constitutional rights or the Charter of Rights in Canada, they talk about, they, 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 they assume, they presume to have the freedom to say pretty much anything they please. Where did the Lord ever sanction anything like that? Either in the Old Testament or in the New. There's no such thing. When the anointed of the Lord came speaking, when, God, when God's Spirit came upon prophets and apostles and the saints, he gave them something to say. And he gave them those things to say oftentimes, usually. In fact, I don't know of, of an exception. I would say that there was no exception. In principle, there was no exception. The Lord gave them to speak words that the general, the general society hated. They didn't want to hear it. They stoned the true prophets of the Lord. Interestingly enough, they sanctioned, they approved of the false prophets in many cases. Israel was supposed to stone false prophets. Instead, they entertained the false prophets. They received them. They honored them. As, for example, Ahab and Jezebel honored false prophets, the prophets of Baal, which, of which you may not be aware of this. Prophets of Baal and Ashtoreth are prolific today. They don't come in that name. They usually come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. But they're really representing Baal. They don't even know it. But when the true prophets came along, those were the ones that they stoned. Isn't that interesting? So whence, whence cometh this freedom of speech and freedom of, of religion? It never existed in terms of uh, societal values. It never existed. Around the fourth century AD, Constantine instituted the Christian religion, so to speak, Religion, I'm talking now, not the reality so much, but Constantine instituted Christianity as the official religion of the day. He wed it with, with his empire. And presumably, they had freedom of speech. Did they have freedom of speech? I guess if you wanted to um, toe the party line, if you wanted to support uh, the Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, if you wanted to speak according to their desires and official uh, principles, doctrine, laws, then, then you were free to do that. But were you free to speak against the Roman Empire? Were you free to, to speak against, say, the head of the church or, or, or any of the leaders of the church? No. No, you weren't. So there was no freedom of religion. They persecuted the Jews. They persecuted genuine Christians. But the official church, the official Christianity, uh, was, was what, what had the right to speak by law. Whereas those whom the Lord chose and anointed did not have that freedom. Isn't that interesting? Again, as I mentioned before, if, if, that, if that's part of the record here, we're doing this in, in two parts or, or more uh, in this video. Uh, in Judges, there's a couple of times where it's stated uh, there, were, there, were, there was no judge or no king in those days. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And that's the way the world is. The world, if it can have any freedom, it'll do as it pleases. The only way you can have true freedom of speech, true freedom of religion, 
is if you have the tr truth and true religion. It's the only way. Freedom of speech and religion is an internal thing. It's not an external thing. It cannot be legislated. I, as a citizen of Canada or the United States or anywhere in the world, have the right and the freedom to speak the truth, to speak whatever God gives me to speak, wherever he gives me to speak it. If men stop me, then they stop me. And many people have tried to shut me down over and over. Thousands of people have tried to shut me down. Many people have disagreed with what I've had to say. Nothing unusual. The prophets, they stoned to death. The apostles and saints, they persecuted to the death. Were they given? They were these people who suddenly lived right lives, moral lives, upright lives. No more killing. No more lying. No more stealing. No more fornication. No more adultery. No more any of that kind of stuff. And the whole world ganged up on them. They wanted to erase this conflict, this, this conscience pricker in society. That's what they wanted to do. So who is for freedom of religion and freedom of speech? And so today we have, the, in other words, they stoned, they stoned the true prophets and apostles and saints, and they, and they sanctioned the, the, the false ones. They were men of renown, men who were well-educated, men who were having their degrees and doctorates in religion. Like Gamaliel, for example, in the Old Testament and into the New Testament, he, he was against freedom of speech. But, but now, let, let's, not, let's not get carried away here and condemn him for that. God commanded that Israel destroy any false prophets, any false teachers. He did not want anybody worshiping any other god but him. Did he just want that from a selfish standpoint? No. He wanted that for our sake as well. If I start idolizing something or somebody, I'm already corrupting myself. I'm killing myself. If I worship the living God in him alone, then I have life and I have that life for everybody else. Now here were these people who came to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They were given life from God himself, from Yahweh, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know, and we can get, to, get into that. The Jews would disagree that Jesus Christ is God, of course. That's what happened. They killed him. They delegated the job to the Romans, and they can blame the Romans if they wish, but no. Israel slew their own prophets, slew their own Messiah. The whole record is there by the word of their own prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, many, many prophets. They, they condemned Israel, the nation of Israel, the, especially the religious hierarchy, for killing the true prophets. And they persecuted Isaiah and Jeremiah. They did all that. So, they were right. Saul of Tarsus was earnest when he was persecuting the Christian church. He believed that he was serving God. He thought he was doing right because he thought that this uh, Jesus Christ following, these people called Christians, were, were false people. They were a cult, so to speak. A cult meaning something against the grain, something against the social uh, uh, accepted way of living and thinking. So they, Saul of Tarsus thought he was doing his job. Was he allowing freedom of religion, freedom of speech? No. And under God, there is no freedom of religion and freedom of speech. They were only free to speak the truth. People say, well, you have your opinion and I have my opinion. And we can agree to disagree. You're entitled to your opinion. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. It's opinions that have caused all the heartache, all the chaos, 
all the destruction in this world? Opinion, right? Opinions are going to vary. That's what an opinion is. It's, it's something that's not based in fact, truth. It's just your perspective of things. Now, if you have a perverse, perverse perspective, you are going to suffer, you are going to lose, and you are going to cause others to suffer and to lose. That's all there is to it. It's that simple. The only thing you're entitled to is the truth. Now, God would not tolerate false gods in his domain in the Old Testament. Whenever people did go in that direction and worship other gods, whether it be a Baal or Ashtoreth or Moloch or any of those, they suffered horribly in, in, in every way. It was horrible. And God, a lot of the time, was merciful. He was patient with them. But eventually he had to, he had to do something to, to make people understand that they can't just do as they please. They can't just have their opinions. They can't have freedom of religion. They can't have freedom of speech. So then, here comes another problem. You'll have, say, a leftist government come in. Or you'll have the media, like Facebook, somebody else is saying, well, just a minute now, we don't want freedom of this, freedom of that, and freedom of the other. We agree with the leftists, we agree with the liberals, the progressives, the Democrats. We do not agree with President Donald Trump. We do not agree with a conservative Judeo-Christian uh, doctrine, philosophy, understanding, practice. We don't agree with that. So we're not going to allow these things, or we're going to at least try to stifle them. We're going to police them. So right away you see where there's no freedom of religion, no freedom of speech, if people are going to have their own way. One way or another, one opinion, the stronger parties are going to take over. They're going to force their will on the rest of the people if they can possibly do it. And they will. And every one of us is capable of doing that. There is only one way we can have freedom. Let's just set aside the word speech and religion for a bit and let's just say freedom. How do I get free? Jesus said, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And when he talks about freedom, we're talking about freedom in anything and everything in holy ways, in the Lord's ways. There is no other freedom. You people who are atheists, you're not free at all. You've got one big religion. And, and, and you all try to be what? High priests, and you try to be uh, devoted followers of this, of this horrible, ungodly, ungodly, perfect word for that, right? Um, doctrine, religion. It's a religion. Let's face it. You adhere to it. You believe in it, right? And you defend it. And you'll finance it. You'll do all those things. And you will persecute Christians. You will persecute Jews. Tell me that atheism isn't a religion. Tell me that you believe in freedom of religion, freedom of, of speech. Tell me. And you'd be lying to me or being damned fools. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Jesus said the only way that we can be free is if the Son of Man, that is, Jesus Christ sets us free, the Messiah of Israel. The only way we can be free is, is if he makes us free. And the only way we can be free, the only way he does that is by creating a new spirit in us, a new heart in us. He did that for me in 1973 and into 1975 in that, in that area. He appeared to me. He, 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 he made me free from my sin bondage. Wow, my life started all over again. I had hope. I had purpose. I had freedom. I had joy. Never had that up to that time. Oh, yeah, I'd be out there dancing it up and drinking with the drunks, all my buddies. We had good times. And I enjoyed, th I enjoyed those at the time that I was there. At the same time, my conscience was bothering me. At the same time, I was feeling guilty about all kinds of things that I had been doing and was doing, ashamed of some things. But generally speaking, I, I couldn't help but do those things. I was bound. I wasn't free. And the Lord came along and gave me freedom. And he gave me freedom of speech and religion because suddenly I wasn't, I wasn't 
believing what I was made to believe from birth. I wasn't speaking those things anymore. I was now examining everything. I was examining religion, all kinds of religion. I was examining philosophies. I was examining uh, theories, doctrines. Uh, what's real? What isn't real? What's true? What isn't true? I was on a search by freedom. My chains were broken. I was free to search for what was true. Because I was given some truth. I was given some investment capital, if you will, to find out what's true. And praise God, people, praise God, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, I have the truth. I've had it now for half a century. I know what I'm talking about. I have proven my God, the God of, of Israel, the God of the whole world, the whole universe. There is no other God, no true God. People say, well, yeah, there's all kinds of gods, and you choose this one, you choose that one, and people do what they please. So, and they all end up in the junk heap. Do they? Maybe you think I'm nuts, and why not? How can you, how can you not think I'm nuts if, if you don't have the heart to understand what's going on? If you've never experienced, never seen what I've seen, never experienced it, I am not nuts. I love the Lord, I know Him, I walk with Him, I have that personal relationship with Him. I have freedom of speech, I have freedom of religion. Why? Because it's an internal thing. He sets you free on the inside. When Peter and John answered the Sanhedrin, because the Sanhedrin were, were, were uh, denying them the right to speak in the name of Jesus to, to uh, people in Israel, to the Jews, they said, all right, fine, you, you decide for yourself who we'll, we'll listen to. Our Lord directed us to preach Christ, and you're telling us not to preach in his name. Who do you think we should believe, man or God? They had the freedom. Now, that freedom, the Sanhedrin attempted to take away from them. They whipped them or beat them, threw them in, in prison. That's what they did. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion. All right, now, let's go to the, that's the New Testament era, just after Christ died and ascended into heaven. All right. Um, before he ascended into heaven, he was resurrected bodily after three days in the grave. People say that's hocus, hocus pocus, that's nonsense. No, it's not nonsense. It's the reality. It's truth. And it's that resurrection power, that resurrection spirit, that resurrection life that I have right now that makes me free, free of all men, free of all things. I am free to speak. I am free to worship my God. And you can throw me in prison. You can do what you want with me. You can grind me to powder, and I'll still be free to worship my God. I'll still be free to speak what he gives me to speak. That's freedom, all right? You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And the freedom has, has built. It's been put through a process, my freedom, my nature, my heart has been put through a process for the past nearly half century. And the, and the farther I go with the Lord Jesus Christ, the freer I get. So into the New Testament, we, we have people who are preaching. And when Peter and John, for example, and, and there are many, Stephen, he was the first, from what we understand of historical records, Stephen was the first person to uh, suffer martyrdom in the, in the Christian church because of the things he said. And the Sanhedrin couldn't stand it. So they had him killed. They had him stoned to death. And Saul of Tarsus was among those people who was calling for Stephen's death. This was before Saul was converted and set free. He was bound in his vicious zeal, religious zeal. Religious zeal is not freedom at all. It's total bondage. He was, he was bound. He didn't know it, but he was bound. So, so did people like Stephen and... Peter and John and all the other apostles and saints, did they demand of their governments, of their ruling authorities, did they demand religion, freedom of religion and freedom of, of speech? No, there was no such thing. They did not demand such a thing. Christians, true believers, I have to say this, I've been supporting uh, President Trump. I've supported uh, 
many of his uh, policies, I'm not saying that, uh, that I can necessarily agree with everything, but given time, you may end up seeing that he's headed in a different direction than he first indicated because he's playing chess with the people, he's doing things, he's, he's uh, making moves that might appear the opposite to what his goal is. Uh, like, for example, with the wall, building the wall, it may look like he broke his promise, but he keeps trying and he finds one way or another of getting that wall built. He'll find one way or another to, to, to transfer the embassy from, from uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and he did it. Uh, he has stepped out on behalf of Israel like no man has ever known uh, to, to have stepped out. Not that I know of, anyway. But anyway, did any of the saints uh, dare demand freedom of religion? No, they didn't do that. Freedom of speech? No, they didn't do that. They didn't have to. They knew that they had to speak against society. They had to speak against the laws of the land. Now, um, they're talking about freedom of religion. So here's where, here was where I was going with, uh, with President Trump. He is now uh, saying we're going to have freedom of worship. We're going to have freedom of religion. And I think it was the, the most recent um, uh, press secretary saying that we're going to have freedom for Christians and Jews and Muslims and, and everybody else, Sikhs, Buddhists, to worship God, to have their worship places, to worship God according to their own conscience. And God doesn't go for that. He's not interested in your conscience that is formed or based on earthly, worldly values. He's saying, look, here's the truth. Receive it, believe it, live in it, you'll be free. Anything else other, outside of him you're dead. Ultimately, you're dead. Because that is sin. If, you're, if you have any other God besides God, it's sin. He says, you shall have no other gods before me. I am the Lord. I'm the only one. All right? And uh, so if you go into sin by, by, by believing in other gods and committing yourself to them, uh, you, you'll end up dying because sin brings death automatically. And it brings it that day. It doesn't bring it 50, 40, 30 years later when, when you're old and you die kind of thing. No, you, you die the day you step out in sin. And you live that life of death, if that sounds contradictory. You live that life of death. You exist in that realm of hell and death. You do. People think that they get away with adultery. Uh, the commandment was that, uh, that uh, in, the, in, the, in the Mosaic Law, that if you committed adultery, you're guilty of, of, uh, uh, of something that calls for capital punishment. The adulterers were to be stoned to death. Do you think that because the laws of the land don't call for a stoning, don't call for execution, for capital punishment, for adultery, that you get away with it? <laughs> you are ill-informed. I'll tell you this. The day you commit adultery, you die. The day you hate someone, that you would kill them for no good reason, you die. The day you have murder in your heart, unjustified, and when I'm talking about murder, I'm talking about mur murder would have to be called unjustified. If you kill somebody, that's not necessarily wrong. But if you are going to kill somebody without good cause, hate them without good cause, you're dead. You bring judgment on yourself. You actually commit that capital punishment on yourself. That's what happens. You can't break any of God's laws and get away with it. But if you are going to support God's laws, if you are going to have that freedom of speech expressed according to God's will, according to his understanding, men will kill you. You won't be killing yourself. They will kill you. You will die as a martyr. If they can do it, God will preserve those that he has determined to preserve. In the Old Testament, you'll find where, where there were certain prophets who were martyred, killed because of their testimony from God, and there were those whom God kept, like Elijah, for example. He was translated. He, was lift, he didn't suffer death. He didn't see death. He was lifted up into heaven. So he was one who, who they didn't 
kill. They couldn't. God, God's purpose for him was very different. Uh, same with uh, David, king of Israel. He was a prophet. They didn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. They tried. They tried, but they didn't succeed because God was with him. He was a man after God's heart, the scripture says. They didn't kill Abraham. They didn't kill Isaac. They, they didn't kill Jacob. These men were, were prophets. Uh, Joseph, they didn't succeed killing him. There were many, many that, that, weren't, that weren't martyred, but there were many more, I would say more, that were killed for speaking the truth. Throughout history, anybody who came to know the Lord was persecuted by the rest of the world. The world hates God. The world hates its, its own creator. So if you're going to demand freedom of speech as a person in the world, oh yes, I was getting off track, but here we go back to where the press secretary, uh, President Trump's uh, press secretary was saying, we, we want freedom of religion, freedom of worship. I understand what they're saying. And, and, and we can understand the principle of not condemning people and not persecuting people and, and, and uh, killing them for, for not believing and speaking like we do. That's understandable. But here's, here's the problem. There's got to be somebody that's right. There's got to be a standard that's right. And if you stick to that standard, everything will be well. And, and if you know that that standard is true, then it's your responsibility to bring it forth, to live it and to speak it. It's your responsibility to do that. And many people are zealous and they're ignorant and they think they're right and they're not. What happens? We have conflict. Something has to be done. If you're going to have a free country, truly free, it's going to have to be by worshipping the true God, one God, there aren't there is only one God to be worshipped. You're, you're going to have to be in that place of worship of, of that one God, and you're going to, you will be in harmony with, all, with everybody else who, who worships that one God, and you will be automatically in conflict with those that don't. You know very well that Islam and Christianity and Judaism are in conflict with each other. Buddhism, Shintoism, Taoism, any of those, uh, Sikhism, you're going to find conflict. Somebody's wrong there. There's only one that's right if there is one that's right. There can only be one that's right. So the moment you bring five or six or seven or 50 or 100 or 200 religions into the, into the mix, there's no such thing as, as, as a harmonious freedom of religion and freedom of speech. There's no such thing. So we have a problem. What will America be? And I'm not talking about Christianity in general as being right. I call myself a Christian. I am a Christian. That means one who is anointed by God. One chosen by God to be his son, to be his child, as many others have been chosen. But I, I can't do anything other than what he gives me to do because I'm of the same nature. I, I'm born again. And I can't permit other, other religions or, or, or respect them. People talk about, well, you know, you have to respect one another's wishes and beliefs and religion, whatever. I can't respect that which is false. I can't. I am free to reject the false. That's what I'm free to do. And so where I'm saying the conflict comes in is everybody thinks they're right. Not everybody thinks they're right. A lot of people know they're wrong, but they don't care. Atheists know, know they're wrong, but they don't care. They don't want a God to account to. That's, that's their problem. They're, they're fools. Uh, but, but no less a fool is the one who worships a false God. So 
we, we have to have a standard and we're going to have to live according to that standard if we're going to have life. So, so, so can President Trump have a nation that is prosperous and healthy and invulnerable to, to external threat if there isn't true worship? If there isn't, isn't worship of God the Father in truth, in spirit and truth, it's not going to happen. So what kind, of, what kind of nation are we going to have in the United States or Canada or anywhere else? It's going to have to be, it's going to have to be a theocracy. By definition, and I'm not talking about a, a, a Muslim nation as a theocracy, theocracy, they worship Allah. I'm talking about worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about worshiping the God of Israel. <clears throat> That's the only way we can ever come to freedom. It's the only way, it's the only way. That's when we will have freedom of speech and religion. It won't be freedom to do anything you please. It won't be freedom to, do, to, to believe anything you want to believe. It won't be the freedom to worship any God you want. It's not going to be anything like that at all. It will only be that you are made free to realize the truth, to comprehend it, and to be able to live it, to appreciate it, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. There is freedom. There is no other freedom. There is no other true freedom. If you have freedom for people to do as they please, as, as they deem right in their own eyes, they're going to be in conflict with one another because everybody wants something a little different. Man is filled with greed. He's filled with darkness. He's filled with murder. Yeah. Yeah. Paul describes the, uh, the, uh, all of mankind in Romans chapter 3, and he, and he draws some of that information from the Old Testament, um, the Psalms. That's the way it is. Man is hell-bent on um, being selfish. Man is selfish. That's all there is to it. I don't care if it's your mother. I don't care if it's your father, your brother, your sister, your son, children, all people. I don't care if they're religious, I don't care if they're secular, I don't care if they're atheists, I don't care if they're Christians or Jews or Muslims or whatever. All men are selfish. I, as that prophet, tell you that. I'm only telling you what the scriptures tell me. I'm only telling you what I've learned. I, I'm only telling you what the Lord has given me. Revelation, understanding. I have seen people made free from believing these things that, that I'm teaching you, that I'm speaking right now. That's what's been happening. And I see that people who have condemned what I've said have gone into destruction. Physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, socially, I've seen it happen again and again and again. And if you hear me, it'll go well for you. And if, if you don't hear me, it won't go well for you. I want it to go well for you. Am I going to impose anything on you? No, I'm just telling you the way it is. I'm just telling you uh, how things work under God, by his will, not man's will. And you're going to have to decide which to choose, man's will or God's will. Everybody's going to have to make that decision. And the interesting thing is that it's God's grace that brings us there to that decision. If you don't have it, it's because God hasn't given it to you. Uh, he may have hardened your heart against him. He did that with the Pharaoh in Egypt. The Pharaoh ended up being destroyed, him and his army. He has hardened many people throughout the world. People say, well, why, why does God permit disease? Why does he permit people, children, poor children, to die of starvation, whatever? Sins of the people have caused that to happen. And God has his wrath. This one little thing that I want to toss in right now before we go. Uh, Every, so many Christians talk about, about the day of the Lord. Oh, won't it be wonderful when the Lord appears? Won't it be wonderful? That'll be so great. He'll make everything right. You know what? That's true. He will make everything right, and it will be wonderful. But the day of the Lord is never known as a day of love and great joy. It's never known as that except 
to the saints, those who are one with him, one with the Lord Jesus Christ. But for the rest of the people, what is the day of the Lord referred to as? If you read Joel, if you read other, other passages in the scriptures, the day of the Lord is not known as the day of love. It's known as the day of wrath. A day of wrath. Because you, as a human being, have got to die in order to live. Jesus said, if any man will follow me, let him take up his cross and follow me. And everyone that, that loses his life for my sake will have it. And he that denies me will not have it. He'll lose it. It all boils down to the Lord Jesus Christ. Freedom. Freedom of religion. Freedom of speech. There's no such thing except in Jesus Christ. There is no such thing. You can't, you can't make it happen. It doesn't exist. The saints didn't insist on freedom of religion and freedom of speech. They just had their free life and they spoke their free life. Yes, they had their, there were times when they had to run and hide, flee persecution. But they never insisted on and demanded freedom of religion by governmental laws from this world. That's, that's foolish. That's silly. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Never will. Not that way. So people, you want freedom of religion, freedom of speech? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins which bind you. They bound me. Man, I was, I was dead. I was horrible. And God took me out of that. He gave me freedom. That's the only way we can have freedom. It's not going to be by, 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 by Trump's laws or, 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 or Israel's laws. Right now they're setting up a Levitical priesthood. They're going to be doing the sacrifices. They're planning on that, uh, setting up a third temple. Do you think that there's going to be freedom of religion? If they stick to the Mosaic law, they're going to kill Christians if they don't believe that Christians are true. They're going to kill Muslims. If they, if they go according to the Mosaic law, that's what's going to happen. That's what has to happen. But you see, the only hope Israel has is in their Messiah. The only way that they will ever have freedom in their nation and truth being glorified, it will be to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's no other way. You can't have Islamic nations dictating. Iran has to have their, their, their theocratic government uh, and, 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 and these other nations. Uh, and they think that their God is going to prevail. No, no. Look at their nations being destroyed, being destroyed. Peace there? No. Israel, closer in to the truth. They have the law of God. There are many people who live according to their conscience uh, under Mosaic law, under the Old Testament, the Torah, the, the Tanakh. And, and they're prospering in degrees according to their commitment, according to their faith, according to their worship. Same with nominal Christians. But I'll tell you, we all have to come to that place where we, where we know that Jesus Christ is Lord and we confess him as Lord. And that's when, that's when we're made free in every respect. I'm glad to have brought this message to you. There comes a time